Hi, I'm Todd. I'm B-Shift Engineer here at Station 20, and this is Fleet Friday. Well, I'm excited that, that we're doing this Fleet Friday on Brush 20. This is our newest brush truck. It went in service in April of this year, went on its first deployment in May. It is a Boise Mobile uh, manufactured truck out of Boise, Idaho. It's a uh, Freightliner cabin chassis. Uh, if you would, go over to the other side of the truck and sit in the officer seat and we'll take a look at the inside. All right, here we are in the cab of the, the uh, Brush 20. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of things going on here. We've got our emergency lights here. I'll actually give us a little battery here so these will light up. You can see them a little bit better. Um, emergency lights, siren. We've got our foam and water level here. We've got an auxiliary... A, Alpha, channel 2, SMF2. <laughs> We've got an auxiliary pump here, so I can actually con control the pump from this position and not even have to get out of the cab. It has a little 10 second warm up, and then I can go ahead and start it from in here and operate everything from this seat. So if we're doing mobile attack or something like that, it makes it real convenient for me. Uh, let's see, we've got our radios. We've got our 800 radios and BK, Bendix King radio. Bendix King radio is for use outside of Colorado or working with the Forest Service, uh, any federal agencies like that. Uh, up front here we have uh, window controls, we've got locking differential, this is a four-wheel drive. Uh, here's my main pump switch, so if I click that up then the main pump on this apparatus we can utilize that. We don't pump and roll in that, we can pump and roll on the auxiliary. Yeah, if you look up front here, we, we have a new mounting position for the MDT. It's up above so the officer doesn't have this knee. It, they used to mount them down here and it was kind of in the way of his knees, but this will show our map, where we're going, what call we're going on, what units are, are joining us, and basically weather, information, all that type of stuff. So. As I said before, this, this truck is first out for deployments, and this truck went out in May to Apple Valley, California to assist uh, the BLM in their coverage area uh, for about 19 days we were out there. But notice the seats are very comfortable, there's lots of leg room. We drove two and a half days to get out there, um, and the kind of cr crew works together to, to find hotel vacancies as we're driving out there. We start usually at six in the morning and we end by 10 p.m. at night with our driving. We rotate our drivers. Usually the engine boss will just stay there, but the other three guys will rotate through the driving. And we'll usually switch whenever we get fuel or bathroom breaks or anything like that. So uh, on the outside here, this is our typical deployment uh, line pack. You've got a fire shelter here, helmet, we've got our yellow Nomex here, some flagging. We do carry uh, tourniquets in case there's any issue with uh, chainsaws or anything like that. We might have to tourniquet someone. But this is basically, it's about 45 to 50 pounds. And this is what we wear when we're on an incident outside the rig. Anytime we get outside the rig and we're in the area of the fire, we need to have these on. So going back to the, uh, the panel, um, notice the red area here. This is that auxiliary pump that I was referring to earlier. This is for pump and roll. Um, it operates all the hose lines. If we're going to be stationary like pumping lines for a uh, hand crew or a hotshot crew, something like that, then we'll usually use the main fire pump, which is here and here. Um, and then we can, we can pump that. We draft with this as well. Um, we can pick up about 20 feet, roughly 15 to 20 feet. Um, at our elevation, if we go down lower in elevation, then we, we can actually ex uh, 
lengthen that a little bit. Yeah, we've got some uh, pre-connected hose lines here. Um, just on this, you just make sure that you open up your valve and then we throttle up and we can flow foam. This, this engine does carry 500 gallons of water, 20 gallons of foam. So moving on to the first compartment here. It's kind of the engineer compartment. We've got all these ammo cans with kind of organizing all of our stuff. We've got adapters, nozzles, flagging and tape, miscellaneous stuff, and then this does have an air compressor on it. So this comes in handy for uh, blowing out the cab, and if we have tire issues, we can inflate tires, stuff like that. Uh, some basic equipment here. We've got the Rogue. We've got Pulaski, we've got uh, the uh, pickaxe, we've got some extra Ys. You never really can have too much equipment. You're always using lots of stuff on this. Some extra nozzles here. We've got a hose roller, so if we deploy a bunch of hose, it's a quick roller that we can connect to the front bumper. I can show you that when we get up there. So I was telling you about the hose roller, and this is something that um, makes it really handy for us to roll up hose after we've used it. Um, so that just goes in there. So basically what happens with this is the hose will come, it's laid out straight and they're 100 foot sticks. So they come through here, depending on the size diameter of the hose, you can slide this out or in. Comes through here, wraps around this, and then we just roll that hose up. So it gets rid of all the air um, and makes it nice and clean to put it back in, in the uh, compartment. In the past, probably pumped lines that were half a mile to a mile long. So all that hose has to come back down the hill and get rolled. This is the history behind this is Highlands Ranch had a uh, bison herd that's been here for years. I think Denver Water actually is the one that, that uh, let, allows them to graze on their area. So they've got an area down south of us. So that's why we've got the bison on here. So this compartment's a little little more technical. We've got uh, our chainsaw, we've got chaps, we've got some bolt cutters, we've got a, a, a hand, basically, basically a driver for driving in uh, wedges when we're cutting down trees. We've got a Mark III portable pump. Um, if you're familiar with these, they are challenging at times. But we utilize this, if we can't get to a water source and we need to pump water up to us, we can fill up our tank by utilizing that portable pump. So we put this lakeside, riverside, um, off a stream and we can just pull water right out of the, the lake. Let's go up top. Okay, up here as you can see, there's a lot of different compartments here. So these, we call these coffin boxes because you could probably uh, fit a couple of bodies in here. But this is where we keep our deployment. It's called a campaign bag. So our sleeping bags, our uh, tents, our clothing for up to three weeks. Each side has two of them, so each guy gets his own coffin box. Makes it nice. Keeps all the stuff out of the cab and in a safe place. These are water waterproof, water resistant. Um, so it's pretty handy to have these. This is kind of a, a catch-all uh, miscellaneous. So with the whole COVID thing going on, we have a COVID kit. 
that basically has uh, firefighter wipes, sanit, uh, you know, disinfectant wipes. We've got some masks, some scrambled eggs, a little paper towel, some dish soap to clean up. We've got a jet boil on board, so for coffee and stuff like that, we've got our jet boil fuel containers here. Here's the jet boil. Very handy. We've got uh, additional hose in here. I don't know if you can see it from your angle. It's underneath this stuff here. Some additional hose. These are ground mats. These brown um, ground mats, we put these under our tents. So if it does rain, uh, it keeps our bottom of our tent dry. And then this is our Mark III pump kit, basically. So this is all the uh, instructions and all the parts to that pump kit that we saw down below. Here is the drafting hose for that pump. There's two sections of that. We've got a bottle jack down there in case we run into some issues and we've got a couple of extra SCBA bottles in there as well. This is where we keep our extra fuel. Our foam, uh, Class A foam. We've got some DEF for the new diesels. We've got our Class A foam fill there and then our water fill there. And then again we do the uh, little picture up top here to make sure that it all looks good. So this is a pretty exciting compartment here. We've got our MREs. We've got extra Gatorade and water. We've got some more of the black progressive packs and then these red ones are trunk line progressive packs. So basically they're just 200 foot of larger diameter hose. So let's say we've got to go 400 feet before we're really close to any fire. We can run these larger diameter hoses first from the engine and then tie in with the black ones. Um, MREs, some of our favorite things. You never know what you're going to get on a, on a deployment. So. And then as we were saying earlier about uh, being an in-district in resource for structure fires, stuff like that, we do carry two and a half inch supply line as well. And there's 800 feet of that. So down below I talked about the auxiliary pump. So this is a Kubota diesel pump that operates that auxiliary pump for us. So these compartments here, this, this compartment when we go on deployment we'll go ahead and pull these out and leave them behind. These are just web gear for non-wildland team members if they work at this station. So they can get here in the morning, they can fit this to them and then put it on the rig while they're here. Uh, so normally what we'll do is maybe this would be places for our lunches on deployment. It's kind of a thick door so it actually stays kind of cool in here. Um, so it's a great place for lunches, Gatorades, waters. Up here we have an AED, an O's bag, and then we've got our medical kit. If you notice from other uh, Fleet Fridays that the medical kit we carry on the Type 1s are the, the boxes. This is, a, this is a pack so that we can actually carry it as a backpack. And remember I was telling you about drafting or pulling water out of a water source such as a lake, a stream, a river. These are what we use to do that. So this is a one-way foot valve down here. So basically it will allow water in, but once we have this filled with water, it'll stop water from flowing out. So basically we uh, are able to pull water from the water source, fill our truck, 
or pump it to another rig or anything like that. So we've got a total of 30 feet of those hose. We've got also got the four inch or three, I think it's a three inch, a little bit larger diameter there. This is kind of a neat little uh, thing. I don't know who came up with this, whether it was uh, uh, BME or, or what, but basically this is for keeping hose. Um, so if we're doing uh, structure protection or, or something like that, and we need to pick up hose real quick and move on to the next house, then we do this, it's kind of a swim technique for picking up hose. And then we can just hang it over here, strap it in, and then it's ready for a quick deployment when we get to the next house. I'll leave that there. Um, as I said, this is kind of a multi-purpose truck. So we do have carry some ladders. It's a three-section ladder. We've got a Halligan. We've got pike pole. Take a peek in there. This is our hose compartment, and then we've got our radio kit up here. So on deployments, there's four radios in here. And they're the BK radios, Bandix King, which we use with the FedEx. Uh, extra hose. This is a mop-up kit. So it's got pencil line, which is real small uh, diameter hose. And then this is our progressive packs. We refer to these as the front range pack. The difference between what we use and a lot of other uh, agencies use is ours aren't rolled. Ours are accordion loaded into this, so it's kind of stuffed in, but they're stacked in two layers. There's a Y at the bottom and a nozzle. And then as we deploy this, this will connect directly into the engine. You loosen up these straps, firefighter throws this on walks away and it deploys out the back of the backpack. There's some variations to this that I've seen other agencies use. This is a backpack pump. So basically if we're away from a water source, we fill this up off the engine and then we can wear this as a backpack and it's got a little nozzle here that you can basically spray water with. Some more equipment here, tools. This is also where when we're on deployment, the, uh, the Charlie seat and the officer will keep it, their, their uh, deployment bags here, um, their web gear. So it's nice and roomy for that. When you're on deployment and there's four guys in here, there's never very much space because we have to be we're packing for 14 days up to maybe even 21 days so we got some stuff a variety of different tools so these again are not torpedo shoots it's just extra spare bottles so we do that we try to have a couple of spares in case we need to uh, swap out our bottles rehab I think a, it's a pretty great use of space and then there's two more packs there so that is our uh, drip torches so every once in a while on deployments we, we could potentially be structure protection we could be firing which would include that and that's basically fighting fire with fire uh, what we'll do is we'll come off a control line, a road, um, a lake, and we might put fire on the ground to kind of remove some of the fuels if the fire is coming towards us. Uh, there, it's a mix of gasoline and diesel. Straight gasoline would burn a little too hot, so we mix it. I think primarily it's diesel. Uh, another. Another pre-connected hose line up there, just like the other side. Uh, here we have 
just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, toolbox. We've got some jumper cables, fire extinguisher, little garden hose, some P cord, which is parachute cord. This is very handy in the wildland stuff, tying off stuff. I guess that's about it there. Uh, let's go up to the front bumper. So we've got a couple of different options for uh, pre-connected stuff. We have a valve under here that you actually open this and then open the hose there. These are short, so you're gonna be close to the engine. Um, as the engineer on this, I like to have the guys out in front of me so I can see them better. Um, if they do have to work from the rear, I uh, wanna make sure that they're in my mirror so I can see them. They're if we're doing a mobile attack or something, we might have these flowing and they're putting out water as we're driving along. This also has spray bars here. Uh, they put out a lot of water, so we go through a lot of water when we use them, so it's not really our go-to. We'd, we'd prefer to use the hose line. And then we've got another pre-connect here. We can pull this out and connect it in. Um, notice here, this is a smaller one inch line here, so for mop up something like that so once the fire is pretty much out we're just going around hitting hot spots here in Colorado we have yuccas that burn for days so sometimes you got to dig and dig and drown basically the guys that put this together really did a great job with the lighting package on this we've got um, a really nice uh, light down here that kind of cuts the smoke and it's low so it, it can see underneath when you're in smoky conditions, driving in a place where you're not as familiar with, being in another state or whatever, lighting is huge, especially if you're working at night, obviously. Uh, but anyway, that's that's what they're, we got one up top is a brow light, and then this is considered a fog light to improve our visibility at night. Every once in a while when we're deployed, we get night ops, and we're on the fire all night long. So we'll start at say 6 p.m. and then work till 6 a.m. Well, that's brush 20. Thanks for joining me. Take care.